Now you're welcome along. Wednesday Night Rugby is coming at you. So listen, the new situation with Monday and Wednesday Night Rugby is that it's very much available in full on podcast. That is the way we're doing things now. I know lots of you don't love that, but it's just the way that makes sense for us, if you can forgive us. So on podcast in full, uh, you'll be very happy to know that the main man, Andy Dunn, was unexpectedly available to come into studio. So he is in. Jerry Thornley in as well. So uh, it was a pleasure for us that Andy actually watched Rugby This Side of Christmas, which was not Test Match Rugby, and Jerry obviously a regular. Uh, there's a whole bunch of great stuff in this on the matches over the weekend and the matches to come. Uh, but we got started, and this is the, the section we're going to give you on YouTube right now. Uh, Jerry had been talking about how he likes the look of the new La Rochelle number 10, and Andy made a point about Anglo Saxon number 10s. And so we pulled at that thread and we chatted about Anglo Saxon 10s and beyond. And so it's uh, a little bit different. And we do get into the match analysis when you listen to the podcast and in full. But we're just going to jump off here with that initial section where we talked about uh, number 10 play generally. So do come and find us on podcast for the full chat. Would you consider Sexton and O'Gara as Anglo-Saxon? Yeah, I would, yeah. Kind of Northern Hemisphere. Game managers. I, O'Gara, like if you look at the Irish out-halves over the years, you go back to the 70s, Mick Quinn was a game manager and a conductor. Ollie Campbell was. Tony Ward wasn't, I think. Ollie Campbell was? Yeah, yeah. I think Ollie was his yeah. game manager. You know, Paul Dean maybe wasn't, but then you had Humphreys. And were we ready for Tony Ward as a country? Probably not. But you had Humphreys... You know, Gara, great game managers. Sexton's nearly a, a different... He's so, by sheer force of will, has shaped a team, brought a team and a squad and a culture to his shape over 15 years. Not so understated, but as a game manager. Mm. But Byrne is like a true game manager and conductor of a team. And I, it's an incredible trait. He gets very little credit for it. Like, you'd have to have a very clear argument to not include him on the back of what he's done in the last four weeks to not include him in your thoughts for a World Cup because he makes everyone else function so well. Mm -hmm. Like the guy, what's the young guy who came on on Sunday night who was watching the NFL, who, his first game for the 49ers. You see that? Nope. His parents, it was a very funny interview. His parents said they travelled to the game. They never go to his games. But they were playing against Tom Brady so they wanted to see his son on the squad versus Tom Brady but Jimmy Garoppolo who's the starting quarterback got injured and this young fellow went in for his first game his parents were out by accident against Tom Brady and they absolutely rinsed Tom Brady's team and the, the entire point of it afterwards was this is a natural game conductor going into that situation he was not phased in any way he's 20 years old and so I know Ross is older but the role of a 10 been an incredible game conductor that Ross just it keeps happening he keeps getting I suppose it's keeps getting slightly overlooked it's like people say oh, God Leinster kind of had it easy today put someone else in that role uh, after a difficult trip to France in that Leinster side and see it wasn't an easy day for them mm. he does it seamlessly so yeah I suppose I don't know if that answers your question but Anglo-Saxon out halves but <laughs> I'm just pulling at the thread and seeing where yeah. your mind takes us, to be honest. And so would you say there's very little difference between Irish out-halves, the quintessential Irish out-half then, and the Anglo-Saxon out-half? Yeah. Right? We're one and the same. And what pretty, about pretty like much. New Zealand and Australia? And no, South I think they're quite different. Yeah. South Africa, where, I think New where, Zealand where in particular, up? French ones. South African ones, I would say, are more Anglo-Saxon or Northern Hemisphere because kicking dominant, yeah. kick, kicking for territory, kicking to control the game, distributors, well, maybe not attacking threats. Richie, Moonga, uh, Barrett, uh, Carter, um, Aaron Cruden, if you look at the last 15 years, they're all game breakers. They're not game managers and they're not conductors. Joey Carver's an interesting one he because is, of that first 10 years being exactly. reared in New Zealand. He, yeah. You can actually see a little we're, bit we're of gradually key. knocking it out of him. <laughs> <I think. laughs> do do you think Joey Carver's been badly coached in Ireland? Uh, no, I just think he's been coached by multiple people and strong people with different views and so I think it's impacted his play. Okay. You, know, you get you get multiple inputs enough over time, it's difficult. I had something similar um, from about 18 to 25, I think I'd, each year I had a brand new coach and they had very different views. Mm -hmm. Unless you've got a really forthright opinion and confidence to ignore half of it, yes. you're going to listen, try and impress and then you get... Now, I think Joey's now playing very well again he's mm -hmm. getting regular game time kicking is hugely reliable he's just he's just not he's probably not as sparkling as he was 
in, in, in former times, but that doesn't mean he's not effective. Yes. It, perhaps he's fallen into the Ross Byrne category now as well. We'll get back on track in a second, but just one other thought as we have it. So the French 10, so often superseded by the Le Petit General alongside him. Mm. So in Intimac, what's he, is he taking a step back and letting Dupont run the show? Like would Sexton and Dupont... God, the I uh, friction I don't filled. like the irresistible force meets the immovable object imagine those two playing mm. together I, I don't think, know yeah, some of the John Cooney and Sexton was the chemistry right because he'd be uh, the closest yeah, maybe yeah. Ireland have well, there to there has a, to be chemistry I wouldn't say Intermax stepping back I'd say into, in, or Dupont Dupont is just taking over and it would be similar with Sexton but I don't know what the two I mean two incredible players it would be interesting to see them they probably would be a, a force to be. He's a very about. classical French ten, isn't he, Intermac? And so is Jalibert. Yeah, yeah. Jalibert's Jalibert, I think Jalibert is class. class. What, what do you fan. mean by classical, Jerry? He's a big running threat. He takes the ball to the line. He can go either off either foot. He's a he's a real footballer. You know, okay. very often with French tens, they can play nine as well. Freddie Michelac being a classic yeah. example. Okay. Ella Salle did it. Ella Salle did it. There's been so many French yeah. tens who can play nine or vice mm. versa. Mm. And that's what I mean by that okay. as well. As opposed to game manager. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Jalibur, I've watched Jalibur a good bit this season. Bordeaux Begler are very dependent upon him and they didn't bring him to the away game against Gloucester, which is why I didn't back them. <laughs> because they are even more Jalibur dependent than Toulouse are Dupont dependent, if you know right. what I mean. And uh, he just makes something happen out of nothing. He's got a wonderful array of skills and just a real running threat. It'd be a bit like Bowden Barge. You've almost got a winner at 10. So. <laughs> You know that gives you. I like I like tens with a big running threat. Mm. Yes, me too. But, they, but they're not they're not a prerequisite, and no, they, no, they not certainly all. don't guarantee success. Mm -hmm. Compared to, I'd love to see the success rate if we were to say your your game conductors the like Ross Byrne the win ratio for Leinster. I've yeah. no, I mean it's got to be over ninety five percent. That's just a guess. Yeah, they almost never lose with him, mm -hmm. and he never misses kicks. And like he's he's not a he's not a running threat. No, true. He's so understated, but I just think that that conductor side is growing and growing and growing on me. I mean, I interviewed... You're um, maturing. Maybe I am, but maybe I, I interviewed, I did a corporate thing a couple of weeks back, I interviewed Michael Lina the week of the Aussie game. And I asked him about the, the quarterfinal of the World Cup in 91, mm -hmm. where we had the breakaway try, Gordon Hamilton scored. And I was one of, I was an 11 year old, but I was one of 50,000 people going bananas in Lansdowne Road. But there was a huddle under the post, right? We went, Ralph Keyes got the conversion. This is a World Cup quarter final. We went 18 15 up, there's two minutes on the clock, we're winning. And there was a huddle. And I asked the captain, Nick Fire Jones, was off the field. So I asked Michael Lino, what? Because he became captain, he was vice captain. What did you say in the huddle? And he said, I took a couple of deep breaths and I said, we have to assume with two minutes to go, Ireland are going to want to protect their lead. So let's not kick off shallow and try and get possession. Let's kick off long. They're going to kick it into the stand. We get a line out in the 22. We're going to throw it to John Eales. I'm going to call this play off the line out and we're going to hope for the best after that. But it was a very clear plan. Now, for everyone watching that game in Lansdowne Road when you're full of excitement, Nobody understands that that's all preordained. That's preordained, like yeah. a game conductor. Yeah. It's strategic. So Lina ran that. Sure enough, Campisi makes a line break. He figured I better get around and get in support. And if we don't, at least I know where the ball is, and I get a second touch. Lina scores in the corner. They go through. They win the World Cup. Yeah, that's game. That's just incredible game perception remember and management. Paris, remember the, the drop goal? So France have a penalty to go two scores clear and then the drop goal doesn't happen. Yeah. 2018 first yeah. game. Yeah. They're behind the posts. Yeah. Johnny Sexton tells Ian Henderson I'm kicking the ball left. He tells Keith Earls to hug the right touchline because I want you as a cross kick option. Yeah. So all that's uh, 46 phases ensue thanks to Ian Henderson claiming the restart but also a key moment is Keith Earls being ready for the cross Absolutely. kick. Absolutely. And Johnny plant all that in the in goal area. Yeah. And th that's exactly what I'm, what we're talking about. Yeah. So, like, if that's, that's Anglo-Saxon. That's, that's where flair meets Anglo-Saxon yeah, as well. Yeah, and yeah, risk-taking. Yeah. Risk yeah. 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 yeah, and obviously the balance, the, the absolute greats have the balance of both. Yes. But, yeah, we need, you know, I certainly need to rein it in and be careful about, you know, I like, I like a, a running threat at 10, but, you know, Tom Brady's never been, we're talking about him, has he ever been a running threat? No. Never in his life. He's the greatest of, of all time in the NFL, so... The genius there, Jerry and Andy together. That's only their third time on together, I think, on these um, 
evenings and already people have them as a bit of a dynamic duo so we'll try and get them to come on again as much as possible again though that was just a small section of the full chat come and find us on podcast help us out help everyone out and uh, that's the way it's going to be for the foreseeable so you'll get us on podcast very easily just search OTB Rugby wherever you get your podcast you'll find us there thanks very much <laughs>